five election and uh, early voting as well. Uh, throughout the course of the day today, we will be meeting and talking with candidates for office here in Berkeley County and of the eastern panhandle of West Virginia. We'll begin our morning with the Berkeley County Commission race with uh, John Hardy and Dirk Stansberry. Before we introduce them, I'll introduce you to my co-host once again, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, former Berkeley County Commission President. Bill. Good morning, Rob. Good to be here. And also John Gilstrap, New York Times bestselling author. Good morning. I like your jacket. Thank you. Very nice. The uh, candidates will have an opportunity. With what are you saying? Because I'm not dressed up. I'm, I sh- you aren't wearing a blazer is all I'm saying. Uh, John is. That's it. That's, there's nothing else implied. Uh, however, if you like one, you can have Mike's red sweater in the back that he's wearing. That would go well with your two blue blazers. Very patriotic. So the candidates will have a minute for an opening statement uh, or so, and then a minute for a closing statement as well. In between, they'll get questions from John and from Bill and occasionally from me. If your name is invoked by your opponent, you have the right to respond directly at the conclusion of their sentence uh, or thought as well. And we'll uh, begin now with opening statements, and for that we'll begin with Dirk Stansberry. Dirk, thank you for being here. Good morning, and thank you for bringing this on. Our media, our open media, is a cornerstone of democracy. Uh, Quickly, I'm doing this because Berkeley County has given me so much, uh, and I've come from a family that always contributed to their communities. Uh, my mother was spent over three decades in, as a 4 H. They supported the arts, they supported the Lions Club. And uh, so <clears throat> I want to follow in that. I've been very active in my uh, church. I'm the treasurer and Sunday school teacher, and I am very active in Civil Air Patrol, where I'm a major, and I work primarily with the cadets and training them. Um, I've got over 30 years in youth soccer as well. So my goal is to get back to the community because it is about Berkeley County. It is totally about Berkeley County, and it is where I live. It's where we all live. It's about our neighbors. It's about the uh, 167th, who, thank goodness, they're back from their deployment most of the summer. Uh, Welcome them back. It's about our teachers. It's about our um, coaches. It's about our ministers. So it is just about Berkeley County. It's about our neighbors. And that's what I give back to them. Mr. Hardy. Thank you. Uh, good morning, and thank you uh, for having us this morning. I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys putting this on. I appreciate Mr. Stansbury being here, uh, giving us both the opportunity to speak and uh, why we want to uh, uh, work to uh, um, help move uh, Berkeley County forward. So my name is John Hardy. I'm a lifelong resident of the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, I'm a local businessman. I've been in business here for 30 years. Uh, I've chosen to raise my family here. Uh, I have uh, been involved in many different aspects of Berkeley County from Rotary and Planning Commission and lots of other organizations. I've spent the last six years representing Berkeley County and a portion of Jefferson County uh, in the West Virginia Legislature uh, as a lawmaker. Uh, I have seen the very special challenges that Berkeley County has uh, against the rest of the state. Uh, Most of my time in the legislature has been working towards trying to get the Eastern Panhandle on a level playing field. Uh, We don't always receive the resources that we should receive from the state, um, and we are in a very unique situation. And uh, I thought that it would be time for me to come back and work in my local community, which I love so much and I've been a part of so for a a very long time. I believe that Berkeley County is going to have some serious challenges in the next six years. Uh, with our rapid expansion and our rapid growth, uh, I think one of those major problems is going to be our roads. Uh, I believe that it's time that um, uh, West Virginia Department of Highways takes a serious look at the roads in Eastern Panhandle uh, and understands our unique challenges. So uh, with all of my experience and my uh, relationships that I have built over the years in Berkeley County and in Charleston and through the legislature and hopefully with the upcoming uh, uh, new governor, I am hopeful to be able to use those types of relationships to be able to uh, address the challenges that Berkeley County is definitely going to uh, encounter in the next six years. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hardy, Mr. Stansberry. And uh, for your responses, once the uh, panel begins asking you questions, try to limit those to one to two minutes uh, if you can. If you need more time to be more thorough on a particular response, 
Just let us know. We'll try to accommodate that, time permitting, of course. Mr. Stubblefield. Thank you, gentlemen, for running for office. You're, I think you're running for the most, one of the most challenging and one of the most enjoyable offices in elected government. So thank you for joining us today, and thank you for making the commitment to run for office. Uh, this last uh, session, the Berkeley County and other counties were given the authority to implement impact fees. How would you utilize the impact fees? I'll start with you first, Mr. Hardy. Uh, yeah, so I think that was a piece of legislation that I was involved with uh, on the tail end of it. I was I did not introduce that, but I worked with uh, within my committees to, to to move that piece of legislation forward. I think that it's just one more tool that Berkeley County is going to have in its uh, arsenal to be able to raise revenues. Uh, there was pretty finely um, defined in that piece of legislation how that could be used and what counties it would be utilized for, and it was very crafted for Berkeley County. Uh, I think that uh, moving forward that that money uh, I think we're estimating somewhere between five to seven million dollars per year annually uh, based on how many homes are built new homes are built in Berkeley County that that money would be used for police fire EMS and and quality of life issues such, such as parks and recs and and, and those things uh, I believe probably through statute or through however the um, process of that comes together that's going to be it's somewhat of a process to be able to figure out who gets what pieces of the pie because uh, everyone's going to have their hands in the cookie jar uh, i'm sure that the uh, the schools the education is going to want a piece of that um, but i do believe that the the larger amount of those revenues need to be used for our police our fire our ems and for our uh, quality of life parks and recs and and those types of issues thank you very much uh i'm stansbury Thank you for that question. Um, and I want to do make a clarification. A lot of people out there believe that impact fees are paid at the develop by the developer or the builder. And you have to realize that basically all fees ultimately end up at the closing of the house, and they end up on the cost of that house. So we're looking at cost of homes going up and up and up, and now we're going to throw another about a uh, ton of money on top of it. Uh, Jefferson County has just reinstated some of theirs, so they're up around eight, nine thousand dollars That said, the code, there is a sub-paragraph uh, to that that allows us to adjust those to low-income housing, but I believe we could even do some more modification to that so we can lessen the impact so that our children and our grandchildren don't have to move to Morgan County to be able to afford a home. The next thing is, and he's right, those areas that he mentioned are very vital to getting funding. But we need to also look at things that don't quite make the pr uh, press uh, very much. One of the common advertisements on your station is by the health department talking about radon. We have a lot of older homes that have not addressed that. So we need to find ways to get money through the health department to help people get radon out of their homes, number, number two cause of cancer. We still have a lot of places that have lead pipes. We have some very older homes. So yes, everything that John said is correct, but we also need to look at some of these other things to help the welfare and our uh, lower income and our elderly get healthy homes. So impact fees, and I've talked to some builders and developers, and they've pretty much come to the conclusion we're going to have it. We just need to make sure that it's applied to the public adequately and equitably, if I can get that word out, and not overburden the lower income. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Gilstrap. Yeah, first question is for you, John. Um, in a recent article, I, I won't suggest where it was because I won't get it right, um, and in your opening statement, you emphasized a you, you prioritize infrastructure, schools, roads, uh, a lot of things that actually come from the state house, not from local government. And it just occurs to me that you're leaving the job where you had the most influence over those things to come to a job, to run for a job where you have less influence over those things. Am I wrong? 
No, yeah, I think you are. I think you are. I think as a legislator, I did have a lot of influence on how those things are. But I think coming back to Berkeley County and representing Berkeley County, understanding how the legislature works, understanding how the Senate and the House works, um, hopefully having a good, close relationship with our next governor. Uh, I, I've had a very long relationship with Patrick Morsey. I do believe that he will be our next governor. I've had very in-depth uh, conversations with him about the challenges that the Eastern Panhandle uh, faces. And I believe having armed with that knowledge, also being armed with having the everyday uh, know about of the county, being in this building and working with my other commissioners, I think that I will, and, and also having a very tight relationship with our legislative um, body from the Eastern Panhandle, our, our coalition that we send, our delegation that we send to Charleston, I have a very close relationship with them. I believe that, that it will be very strong. Uh, I will be in a very strong position as a Berkeley County Commissioner to be able to work on the state level, to be able to work with our local delegation, and also work with our other commissioners, understanding the challenges that we face. Um, I think that uh, the number one challenge, as I said, in, in our area is roads. Um, we cannot control the growth in the eastern panhandle of housing. Uh, there's, there's two ways that we can control the growth, and that would be with these new impact fees that we're putting in on new residential construction. Construction will, will be one way that can control growth a little bit, and it can be controlled with water and sewer. You can see that the developments are following water and sewer. So that's where the, the growth is going. So I think with working with the new administration that's going to be in Charleston and uh, the delegation that comes from here and having an intimate knowledge of what the problems and challenges of Berkeley County are, that will make me an exceptional uh, county commissioner and, and will give me a lot of knowledge that um, other commissioners may not have. Okay. Mr. Stansbury, do you have anything to add to that? Or? Um, I can appreciate – him having to deal with that swamp down in Charleston and having to work through that yes, and um, um, really wish that he still had was down there fighting for us and that we're basically getting a rookie team a lot of new people are going down there so I don't know I think we've lost a lot of say in that but um, we do need to deal with the state we need to find ways for them to recognize and come and talk to us before they do things. Uh, the Route 9 uh, project, nobody was talked to in the county, Morgan County. They didn't talk <coughs> to the uh, uh, metropolitan area. They just came in and said, looky what we're going to give you. Uh, it does need to be a good communication. And I will say that my experience is bound down here where the rubber meets the road, where I've had to deal with the people that actually do work in the Department of Highways and and they are most often agreeable with what we have to do in this county. What we need to do is get Charleston to even listen to their own people about what we need in this county, whether it be in the water and the sewer. Um, we also need to have the experience that I have in this building and working with the individuals in the growth uh, most people don't realize that when they were putting the sewer line in for the Paynes Ford, that the district actually was trying to run sewer lines out through Arden. I was joking with my partner at that time, what do apples and peaches need with sewer lines? Well, of course, they don't. Townhouses do. We need to be able to have the knowledge of what's going on with these extension of projects to know that John is correct. They will come if you build it. And we need to make sure that we don't put sewer and water where we don't have other infrastructure like roads. It works in a concert. All the components are necessary to make a safe uh, environment for people to have homes. And we can't go scattering out through hay fields and orchards when we have a better place to put them. So yes, making sure that our direction of where these utilities go where these roads get improved will help us guide where growth is. Thank you. Okay. Follow up, John. Um, a second question or a follow up? Follow up. I uh, know. Yeah, uh, we both mentioned growth. Uh, it's about 18 years or so ago, the last time zoning was put in uh, front of the voters to decide. We've had a lot of growth that time. I hear complaints from everybody that the growth has really been unchecked. Is it time to reconsider instituting some sort of zoning in the county? Start with you, Ms. Stansbury. 
Uh, thank you for that question. It's um, uh, one of those two-edged sword zoning, um, and it's not so much getting zoned as RU or XYZ or whatever they put you in. Zoning gets to be a, um, an issue with the little subordinates that go along with each of these zones. And that's where you find out what you can and can't do in that particular zone. As an engineer, zoning sometimes is, is easier to work with because if what I'm doing fits into that box, it's an easy, we go through quicker. If it doesn't, it gets more convoluted and more expensive to go on. And sometimes they're just silly. Uh, a lot of these uh, ordinances that get put into these boxes are made by consultants, and they pulled something off the shelf that they did in Arlington or Minnesota, and they put it in there. It doesn't fit Berkeley County. So you need somebody to be able to look at these subordinances and know, does, does that fit Berkeley County? So if we do get it, and it most likely it will be coming, and it uh, leads up through this um, protection or I keep wanting to say homeland security, but, but home rule is going to lead into that anyway, and that's the kind of a form of it. So the zoning, if we get it, needs to be tailored to Berkeley County to allow us to keep the natural resources and our agriculture intact and grow where we can grow and not where we shouldn't be. Thank you. That's kind of a long way around. Would you support zoning? I've lived in both, worked in both, um, and like I said, it's a double-edged sword. Um, we can get through with it. I would support it um, along those lines that it gets molded to fit Berkeley County and not Minneapolis. Thank you. Mr. Hardy. No. I um, <clears throat> I would not support zoning. Berkeley County has spoken loud and clear uh, on two separate times of not wanting zoning. There are many people that move here to West Virginia for the freedoms that we have here in West Virginia. I've seen that as being a part of the legislature and legislative action that we've taken. Um, there are people that have their property rights. They do not want to be told what they can and cannot do on their own property. So I would not support zoning in Berkeley County. Um, if it came up for a public referendum, which that's the only, I think that's how it could be passed, I think the, the county commission can they, pass they, it on their own. Can, yeah. I would not support yeah. that. Um, I, I've been a proponent of zoning uh, every time that it has come up. Proponent or opponent? Opponent. Opponent. Okay. All right. John? I, actually, I just would but isn't that how we end up with these controversies of people ending up with the solar farms next door and then they get all upset about those things? Wouldn't zoning prevent something like that zoning could prevent that but you you know you have these people that are very i'm more concerned about people's property rights right. so you know we talk about the people getting so upset about the the solars and i think some of those solar farms that are in jefferson county are atrocious i mean that you ride down and look at them they're terrible looking but you take a solar farm that's going to be on a brownstone site like dupont which is kind of back off the beaten path it's taken a brownfield uh, site that could probably never been used for anything else and put a solar farm on that, I think that's okay. It's kind of back off. You're not really seeing it. Uh, I think Jefferson County did themselves a disservice uh, by putting those solar farms out in the most – uh, when you come down that road, that's all you see on both sides of the road. And, it, and it, you took a very beautiful piece of farmland and did that. You know, I think what Berkeley County did, I think we need to be very careful on the sizes that we allow. Uh, I think that we need to be very careful on uh, the uh, locations that we allow. Okay. Um, Mr. Stansberry, my uh, next question is for you. Uh, on your website, you mentioned you've got a broad background in teaching. Is that right? That's correct. At, at various levels? we got a thing in the line here. Um, you're very specific about security issues at schools, and, and the one specific issue you address is that you're not in favor of arming teachers. And you are in favor of less specific issues of, of other, other security steps to be taken. So uh, are you in favor of allowing teachers who choose to arm themselves to do so? And what are some of the other security procedures that you are in favor? If not, what, what security uh, precautions are you in favor of in the schools? I'm for highly trained professional security in the schools. And above and beyond the weapons training, but also the ability to understand 
growth and development of children. Um, and each of these differ between elementary through high school, and they need to be able to understand with that they're in a school and what they're dealing with. So you've got a, com a compound problem of both security but also working in and amongst children. Um, as far as arming teachers, what I see is the a intruder now having two weapons, the weapon that he just took from the teacher and the weapon they came in with. You need someone who is much more trained in understanding how to do that. But like I said, you need special, special training to be able to work in schools with children. So yes, I am in favor of that side of it, but not necessarily having that uh, weapon in, in each of the uh, classrooms. The other issue is when security does show up, when the deputies or the police show up, they ended up taking down the teacher because they have a weapon in their hand. So I think it, there's some other issues, some better training on, um, <laughs> I'm old enough to remember uh, duck under your, your uh, desk because the Russians are coming. But uh, we do need some training in if there is an active shooter or intruder in the school, what should be done there. So there's a lot of things we can do that would protect our children um, and also the teachers and not put them in harm's way. So I, I do like the idea of having security in the school, <coughs> but it needs to be highly trained and understand that they are in a school. Can I say something about the solar? Oh, sure. Um, and I agree with him about, uh, Mike, about the, they're both atrocious, but they also take up some very valuable agricultural ground. Um, I was actually asked to take a look at various ordinances with that. And I find them leaning toward putting you in areas that are better for agriculture than, than solar farms, and that mostly towards stormwater management. One thing I would like to see is a sequence uh, before you put a solar farm to look at other alternatives. He mentioned brownfields or something like that, but also what's wrong with parking lots? Take a mall's parking lot and you multiple things there. You, you can work a deal. You don't have to purchase the ground. You can work a lease deal with the owners, maybe even give them free power. You shade that hot asphalt in your car, and it's not being used for anything else, and you've already got some management that can take care of the parking lot. So you have a win-win situation there. Our schools have large parking lots. So we can look for areas that already have a use that we could get out of it. And if you need an example, the university down in Charlestown, that new building they put next to uh, between uh, Ranson and Charlestown, you go in their back, their parking lot is completely covered by solar cells. And you can plug your EV right into the post. So there's other ways we can get the solar in without harming our, the land that we have for other uses, either for agricultural or farms. School security. So I've been a huge um, supporter of SROs. We're blessed in Berkeley County that the County Commission right now does support SROs in, in the high schools and um, has backed that program through the Sheriff's Department. Uh, I have always said that teachers are teachers and security personnel are security personnel. I believe that if we're going to take security serious and we're going to uh, protect our students, protect our children, we need to have trained um, police officers, uh, people that are trained in firearms, people that are trained in protecting others um, in, in our schools. Uh, I think that it is uh, pretty shameful that the money that the, is spent in Charleston through the legislature, uh, that that money cannot, there, we can't find the money for SROs in our schools. Uh, I'm afraid that it's a, uh, a win instead of an if, uh, if this happens and shame on every one of us legislators if we were not able to get this passed and be able to get money into the system back to the counties. Uh, I think I've, I've proposed legislation to make it threefold, 
that the counties would have skin in the game, the school system would have skin in the game, and the state would have skin in the game. You have a three um, tiered system where everybody has some money in and they're providing um, law enforcement officers to these schools to protect our students. I think that that's probably the way that the state is going to move forward. I know that the county, as a county commissioner, if I'm elected as a county commissioner, I would definitely have buy in of the county being able to have uh, money in. Uh, towards part of that the school system can take you know they have money in their um, coffers for that so I think moving forward that's the way that we need to move forward gentlemen we're just about out of time so I'm going to ask for a couple of brief answers to a, a couple of questions here for you before we go to closing statements in regards to county home rule uh, 15 seconds Dirk would you be for county home rule or not we need it we that, need it to be that, able to uh, deal with the, the various agencies Mr. Hardy. Yeah, I have I have been staunchly against home rule for the counties. I'm not sure that the county needs it. The county says they need it. Uh, I have not been able to get a close look at the county's budget to understand. Uh, there was an interview done yesterday that states that the county has $8 million in its surplus budget, which is about 15%. Moody's and your other bond rating agencies want you to be somewhere between 18%. So we probably need to work on getting our bond or our uh, rainy day fund built up just a little bit. But I'm not looking to be elected to office to raise taxes on our taxpayers, uh, people Okay, and, and additional uh, county-supported funding for Berkeley County Parks and Recreation. Mr. Stansberry? At the Parks and Rec needs to expand, but we have about 28 different committees and commissions that could also use some assistance in, in improving things. So, yes. Mr. Hardy? Definitely. I think that's part of the new impact fee structure that will go to the Parks and Rec and also the excise tax reform bill that I passed while I was in Charleston that's going to bring about $1.8 million back to Berkeley County when it's fully implemented. Part of that money is going to go to Parks and Rec. Let's move to closing statements now. We'll do that in inverse order of how we so, John, you'll go first with closing statements. Okay, well, thank you to, again for having this. My name is John Hardy. I'm the Republican nominee for the Berkeley County Commission in the Tuscarora District. Um, I am a staunch conservative. I'm a fiscal conservative that's proven. I have a track record. I have worked for the past six years representing Berkeley County in Charleston, fighting for Berkeley County, bringing money back from Charleston that is unfairly and unduly sent to Charleston. Uh, I have worked to try to do... Uh, uh, I've renegotiated our court fees. Um, so, you know, what we got reimbursed for our courthouse cost was ridiculously low. I worked with our uh, president of the county commission, Doug Copenhaver, and was able to rework and renegotiate those things. So about everything that I've done in Charleston in the last six years has worked to make the Eastern Panhandle on a level playing field and bring money back from Charleston. That's our money that we should be keeping. I think you need someone who's going to be, has a strong voice, a strong personality, who's going to be able to work with the West Virginia Department of Highways, the infrastructure, the IJDC, which I sat on that for a few years, uh, working on bringing money back here for infrastructure, water, sewer, broadband. You're going to need someone who has a strong, loud voice, who is not afraid to go to Charleston, ruffle some feathers, work with the people that's down there, and also being able to understand the challenges that Berkeley County is going to face in the next six years. So I humbly ask for your vote to be your next county commissioner in Berkeley County. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dirk Stansberry. Now, once again, thank you for the opportunity. I uh, thank my uh, neighbor next door here uh, for his service as well. But I do believe that I have much more experience in where things actually get done, not in a hall, the ivory halls, but where we actually get things done and how to incorporate the different groups together to work towards solving problems. And yes, we do need a strong voice to be heard all across the Eastern Panhandle and all the way down to Charleston. I do want to address the last thing. I'm not for home rule to raise taxes. In fact, I would ask that question, do we need that or would it even be better to get in again are you with Charleston that the current six percent is paid that one percent should go to all jurisdictions and not to Charleston where we can use it where we need it not without get spent in needless things by Charleston so it's not necessary to increase taxes to have home room there's other things where we can merge and work with the Department of Highways and these groups if we have a little more say in what happens. <clears throat> that said, again, this is 
This is not about parties. If it was about parties, we would start looking at certain people getting certain things, but there's no committees on people. It is a team effort. You can go downstairs where I sit, and you can check a box and sign your name, and you're suddenly in another party. I guarantee you, you will not spout horns, nor will you get a halo. You are who you are, and you are my neighbor, and that's where it is. Berkeley County is about our neighbors, and that's where we have to go and make sure that they're done. I want to thank you. God bless Berkeley County. Dirk Stansberry, John Hardy, thank you both very much. Thank Best you. of luck to you both thank on you. Election Day.